Hey! So today I'm going to talk about gravitational potential because that is something that it took me a very long time to get and it's really quite important. So I'm going to talk about it and hopefully that will give me more confidence with it and presumably tell you something about it which would be quite good as well really. Potential energy is a form of work done. Work done is the force times the distance moved so work done against gravity is the force of gravity times the height that you move. So I have my headphones here and if I move them up I have given them kinetic energy which was transferred into potential energy. I have exerted a force on them and moved them a distance so they have gained potential energy. But if I have my iPod and I do the same thing my iPod is actually heavier despite being a lot smaller so its potential energy at the same height will be greater than the potential energy of my headphones. The potential energy of the two things if they're at the same height is not really a very good indicator of what height they're at. The potential energy is not a good comparator because they have different potential energies despite being at the same height. Potential is derived from potential energy and it is a way of comparing. Potential is derived from potential energy. So gravitational potential is a comparator which can tell you more about whether things are at the same height or level or whatever it is you need to know. Gravitational potential is potential energy divided by mass. So it's a potential energy per unit mass, which means both of these at the same height would have the same potential despite having different potential energies. Now, if I were to only consider one object, so if I were only considering my iPod and I wanted to work out how heavy it was and I had a way of working out its potential energy and I were to raise it from this level to this level, at this level I would measure the energy, at this level I would measure the energy and as a result I would be able to work out its mass. And so only considering this one object I would set this level as zero potential energy just to make my calculations simpler. But if I were to consider this, uh, this object in multiple places, I would set the zero level differently. And so there has to be some constant zero in order for it to be a reasonable, reasonable comparator. So the only place that is exactly the same for anywhere you would want to make a measurement is infinity. For instance, if you were to set the ground level where you were doing the experiment as zero potential level, then you would have different results whether you were on the top of the Himalayas or at sea level. It just it wouldn't be a good comparator. And so infinity is zero. No matter where you are, the gravitational potential of an object an infinite way away from you is zero. If we go back to my simple lifting an iPod, as I take it further away from the earth, it gains potential. So the further away from something you are, the higher your potential is. If this is infinitely far away, yeah, that's an infinite distance right there. If this is infinitely far away, it currently has zero potential. And as I move it closer, some of that potential energy is converted into kinetic or heat or sound or whatever it gets converted into. So it has less potential energy, so it has less potential, so that means that it has a negative potential. And that's really where I've had I issues with potential, and I've had issues understanding why it's negative. And so thinking about it this way, and using the simple model of potential to understand why it is what it is, I find it a lot easier and it makes a lot more sense to me and so hopefully that has helped you. Either way, even if you already knew that and that was all completely and utterly glaringly obvious, thanks for taking the time to watch it, I guess.